But Governor, you, you were talking about unemployment being a route to bringing down um, interest uh, inflation. Obviously, not not from a policy perspective, not a price worth paying. Um, uh, uh, as, as an economics point, really. Yes, 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 yes absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, or in, indeed, even economics, g- given yeah. the pressures uh, um, yeah. in the in the economy, we've got more less scope for migration to tackle. Uh, the labour shortage and, and those the, the pressures on wages. Mm. The other thing that, that, that just wanted to observe is that the inflation rate's already gone up without the wage pressures kicking in. So to associate wage pressure to where we are now seems, um, seems odd. Um, if we continue in that trajectory, um, then we could associate it. After 10 years of wa- um, wage stagnation, um, is it appropriate to assign? Well, would it be appropriate to assign wage pressure as the reason why where we are where we are? We think, as, as I said earlier, there's a lot of noise in the wage in yeah. the earnings data, but we think that sort of best effort at stripping that noise out that the underlying level of of increases around four to four and a half percent, and has been for one, and that's quite high given the state the state of the economy we've been in. So there is some pressure in there. Yeah, yeah. Also, as we were saying, I mean, whether it's you know it's in Eastbourne or wherever, I mean, this as I was saying, you've got this very dispersed pattern as well of, of, of we, we also have a vicious cycle of inflation then knocking off the value of the negotiated wage increases. Do you see? You know, it seems like. You know, the bank is in a very tight corner now. Do you see a way out without, you know, policy interventions from government to to address these sort of inter- interacting challenges that you face? Well, it I, looks like it's actually going to be really difficult for the bank to be able to resolve we, this without policy interventions well, we can, to take uh, the pressure off price increases yeah. on consumers, for instance. We can and will do, you know, everything we can do. I can mm. assure you of that. The reason I pointed to a number of other things is that, I, and it's, of course, this is not something that's just for the UK. I mean, the, you know, the gas price story, which is a European story, is not something we can deal with. I'm not saying the UK government could deal with it on its own, but it is a very serious issue in terms of the overall. You know, it's the single largest contributor to, in fact, on the, the Numbers of the previous, when it was 5.2, we reckoned it was about one and a half percentage points of that was coming. The, the UK source. government can take the pressure off consumers who are facing the brunt of this sudden increase in inflation on, and the cost of living pressure is, is kind of one uh, of the, the I, I mean, I, I, as you understand, that's to, not for no, us I, to decide. I understand, I mean, there are choices obviously can be made. I know it's a very active debate at the moment. I, you know, I, I agree with you that <clears> the impact of this was something we do look at. It, you know, obviously, it has a far bigger impact on on, on, on low earners. Um, you know, it, it's very interesting. I look, was looking earlier on actually at the if you take the sort of the family survey and you split it up into deciles, ten, ten sort of sets of equal sets of, of by income, and then you look at the of energy costs as a percentage of the income by deciles, and it is hugely asymmetric. The lowest decile has a much bigger share of energy costs in its, in its uh, spending than the, any of the others do. Thank you. Mm-hmm.